Hello, my good people, Mike Hidalgo here. Thank you for joining us on another FCP Euro DIY. Today, we're gonna to be working on a 2011 Porsche Carrera 911S. My good people, today we have a 997.2 model behind us, but before we get started, I wanna mention that this video is gonna cover 997.2 and 997.1 vehicles. This video is also gonna cover how to A, just remove and replace your bumper, how to remove your bumper to clean your radiators, and how to remove your bumper to upgrade and or just replace your radiator. So, as you can see, today we're gonna to be doing a bit of an upgrade using our CSF kit that we list on the site. This kit includes the two radiators, two jugs of antifreeze, some hoses, as well as a couple crush washers and bunks for the radiators. Added to our kit, but not listed on the site specifically for it, are these two radiator hose connectors. Not necessarily something you may need, but good to have as insurance. We'll leave a link in the description below for you. What's great about these radiators is that they offer a 40% cooling capacity increase, as well as a 15 to 25% cooling efficiency. So with that being said, not only are you improving your cooling system, but you're also, as you can see on the sides of these, removing the plastic end tanks. Those are one of the bigger failure points on these radiators. Over time, they can fail, they start leaking. So this eliminates that completely. If you drive your car hard on the track, these are definitely a great alternative. And if you have a third mounted center radiator, we also have a kit for those as well. Be sure to check out the site. But before we get into the job, let's take a look at some of the tools we're gonna need for this DIY. For tools, we have a UVU vacuum bleeder, we have a 3 8 torque wrench, a 3 8 ratchet, a small flathead, and a small pick. We have Astro Tool 94093. This is good for the hose clamps that come pre-attached to our new radiator hoses. We have a pair of snips, a pair of pliers, a pick, and then we have a couple different sockets ranging from a T25, a hex 6, 8 millimeter, 10 millimeter, and a 13 millimeter socket, as well as an E-Torx 10. We have a couple different extensions, and a nice to have is a 3 8 ratchet, a half inch impact for our wheel bolts, and to my left we have a big catch pan for our coolant. Now that we have our tools covered, let's get started on this DIY. All right, to get started, we're gonna start by removing our expansion tank cap. That way, as we break free our bleeder screws, we can go ahead and let the system flow out gently. You obviously wanna make sure this is stone cold before you do this. If you're not sure, you can always release your valve up top to release any pressure. I'm going to set that off. Now let's go ahead and get the car up in the air and start draining some coolant out. So what you have up here is your pressure relief valve and sometimes you can use this if you're bleeding the car or trying to burp the system. And the way you use it is you lift it up. And then that'll allow just enough of the pressure buildup to get out should you try to burp the cooling system or get air out of it. Otherwise you always want to make sure it's flipped down and closed. All right, my good people. Next, we're gonna work on draining our coolant from the block, starting by removing the drain plug underneath the thermostat. I'm using a six millimeter hex on a 3 8 ratchet. Break that free. Do the rest by hand. Just like when you do an oil change, you can always push up on the drain plug while you unthread it, so that way you have a chance of pulling it out quickly so you don't get covered in coolant or oil. All right, my good people, at this point, this side is basically coming down to a small dribble. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take you up top with me while we're working on this and have the strain plug open. And you can either use compressed air or a shop vac, whatever you have available to you. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna blow some air through the expansion tank to help push some of the coolant through that may be still stuck in here. And the reason for that is because you want the system as empty as possible. When you use a vacuum fill tool, it's gonna to suck up all the air out of the system. And if it's sucking up coolant as well, you're gonna get a bit of a mess up top. So we're gonna push as much out, and you'll see me do this throughout the whole job, starting with this drain plug. I'll do the same thing once we get to the, therm to the uh, neck here by the water pump. And then once we disconnect our radiators up front, you're gonna see the same thing again. So if you see me climbing up top, that's what we're doing. Again, a shop air, or compressed air will do just fine. We have shop air here today, so let's get to it. All right, so again, what I'm doing is we have the tank here. I have my shop air. I'm gonna put the nozzle in, cover the rest with a towel. And you should be able to see some coolant down there. So that should do us for now. We're gonna reinstall our drain plug on the thermostat side and do the same thing next to the water pump neck. At this point, we can go ahead and reinstall our drain plug. 
I'm gonna get rid of the old crush washer. We have a new one for this, which that will also be linked in the description below. You always wanna replace the crush washers when you do this job, just like an oil drain plug. It'll leak if you don't replace it. And we're just gonna snug it up by hand with the 3 8 ratchet. And then we're gonna snug it up to 30 Newton meters. You can see it's not a lot. You don't have to gorilla it on. Just be gentle with it. All right, we're gonna go ahead and repeat the exact same process on this end. Same thing with the air and everything. And just like we did on the thermostat side, we're gonna go ahead and remove our drain plug over here as well and hit the tank with some compressed air. Again, this is a six millimeter hex. With that done, we can go ahead and reinstall our drain plug. Again, new crush washer. Now that we have the rear of the car drained, we're gonna go ahead and work on removing our belly pans down here so we can disconnect our radiator hoses and drain it even further. So, T25, you have a couple pieces of hardware all around. Let's get those off. Then we have two 10 millimeter nuts to remove that hold our aluminum pipes in place. All right, let's get our catch pan and work on releasing these two connections. I'm just gonna use a flathead screwdriver to pry up on this clip. You can fully remove it if you want or set it back like that. Then depending on how long it has been since this has been off last or if it's ever been off, the O-ring in here might be pretty glued to the uh, rubber section of this so you might have to fight it a little bit. Just be prepared for a mess. All right, at this point, I'm gonna head back up top to my expansion tank, and just like I did before, I'm gonna blow some air through the system so we can get as much of the coolant out from the pipes as possible. With this emptied out as much as possible, we're gonna go ahead and reconnect everything. However, if you can, I would recommend replacing this O-ring. We'll leave a link in the description for that part number as well as it's not part of our kits, but it is something I would recommend you replace. This one's original to the car. I'm sure it's been off in the past, so it'd be a smart move to replace it. With the new O-ring on, it's gonna be a little bit of a tighter fit than it was when you took it apart. So you wanna make sure you get it a little bit lubricated with the existing coolant, and then you're just gonna have to massage it back into place so that you can put your metal clip back on. We're gonna go ahead and do the exact same thing on the other side. Once we do both of those, we'll put our 10 millimeter bolts back in just so we don't forget them later. All right, my good people, now we're going to start on the bumper removal process. Since we're already underneath the vehicle, we're going to start by removing all our T25s underneath, working from the driver's side to passenger side. With that taken care of, let's go ahead and bring the car down to a little bit more of an eye level spot. We're going to work on taking our wheels off so we can work on removing both fender liners off. All right, now let's work on removing our wheels using a 19 millimeter lug socket. Now we're going to work on removing our fender liner. We have an array of T25s and 10 millimeter plastic nuts all around, so starting with our T25s. So you can see this is a two-piece liner. Should you choose to, you can just remove this lower half and just take out that. We're gonna do the exact same thing on the driver's side, and then we'll get back to it in just a moment. All right, next on our to-do list, we're gonna go ahead and remove our side marker light. If you have the fender liner off at this point, you can push in on the clip that holds it into place. Disconnect the light by pressing down on that metal tab. Off it comes. Next on the list, you're going to see we have the windshield washer, I'm sorry, the headlight washer lines. You're going to want to disconnect the blue clip. It just slides off, just a little lock. Then you can disconnect it. You know, want to pull this line out from the bracket that it's held in. Cool. You also want to make sure you retain that blue clip. Once we get the bumper off, we'll get to see it again. You have another T25 hitting up here in the corner. And with that done, this side's going to be free for the most part. We're going to head back over to the passenger side and do the exact same thing. All right, with our line disconnected and our side marker off, all we have left is our fog lights. If your car is equipped with fog lights, the harness usually sits here. You can see someone's been in here before, broken that clip off, but usually you want to press on these tabs. There's one. This is going to go with our bumper. And now we're going to repeat the same process on the other side. So you can see there is no headlight washer line on this side. So that's one less thing to do there. 
All right, my good people, next on the list, we're gonna work on removing our trim so we can get the rest of our hardware off to remove the front bumper. These just lift up. Originally, they were held on with Velcro from the factory. Over the years, the Velcro gets weak. And you'll see this whole thing lifts up. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side. And then with both of those loose, we just have to work our way around our latch there. Next, we have three T25s. And we also have two sliding clips on either end, which we'll show you. We're gonna need a pick tool for that. I'm gonna use this Captain Hook looking pick. If you don't have one of these, you can use something similar. A clothes hanger might work. Just bend it in the right spot. We grabbed a bigger pick, and then we went ahead and sprayed a little bit of PB Blaster on these hooks. And the reason for that is, you can see there's a little bit of overspray in them. At some point, this nose did get repainted, and they did not remove the bumper or anything holding it in place. So we have a suspicion that the paint is holding our clips in place. Typically, they come out with a little bit of force, but let's try this again. There we go. There's one. You can see we have a little bit of paint, a little bit of corrosion holding that in. And let's get our second one. And there's two, baby. Set these to the side. All right, at this point we have all our hardware off. We're ready to pull off the bumper. Starting on one side, you wanna give it a light but firm yank. Do the same thing on the other side. All right, my good people. At this point, you can see how much crud is in here. You know, we don't know the last time this was cleaned out, but as you can imagine, there's a ton of leaves. I'm sure a couple other things in here as well. This would be a good time to go ahead and get the vacuum out and vacuum this out. However, since we are upgrading these radiators, this is gonna come off. I have a, tra I have a trash bin underneath. I'm gonna take off my three T25s, pull this off, and you'll see a lot of garbage fall down. You'll also see that you have a temperature sensor on the passenger side. Just be mindful of that when you pull this off. You're going to want to pull it towards the front of the car. And you have two tabs on the radiator side that hold it in place. I'm just going to disconnect the temperature sensor for now. Pulls through. Set our duct to the side to clean up. And then here, it's your choice of how you want to clean this up. I'm going to get most of it out by hand. And then I'll bring over a little bit of uh, compressed air, maybe the shop vac, and get the rest of it out before we remove anything further. Now we're going to go ahead and do the exact same thing on the driver's side. The only difference is you're, you're not going to have a temperature sensor like you do on the passenger. So let's get those three T25s off. At this point, we're going to go ahead and focus on the passenger side of the vehicle. We're going to start by removing the 8 millimeter bolt that holds our AC condenser to our radiator. Now we can go ahead and work on getting our radiators themselves out of here. So we're gonna focus a little bit more in the wheel well area and show you some of the things we have to disconnect. After we feed up our AC condenser, we're gonna start by removing the stuff behind the radiator and fan. Starting with this small white support brace. While it's not truly in the way, it makes life a little bit easier. So you're gonna need a 10 millimeter socket. Next on the list, we have a small coolant line up here. It's gonna be a little turquoise tab Similar to your fuel lines, you want to push in on it. You can wiggle it a little bit to break it free. And off it comes. I'm going to tuck this up top. Forget about it. Next, we have an E10 that helps our radiator stay in place. We're going to get that off as well. And then you can slide this down or up, whichever you prefer. This one wants to come up. Keep this. We're going to need this again. Moving forward, we have four 13 millimeter nut and bolts that we have to remove, starting with two nuts in the back, two bolts which we'll show you in the moment. But before we do that, you're gonna to wanna to remove these two radiator hoses by removing the two spring clips that hold them in place. That way when this whole assembly comes out, you don't forget about those and then they hang you up. So just using my same pick tool that I used on the bumper, pull these off. Now, these are something that I mentioned at the beginning of the video which you don't have to replace. However, we do suggest them at the bottom of the listing of the website. So I bought new ones, which I'll show you how to replace, but you can reuse these. 
Now before we head up to the front, two 13 millimeter bolts, let's undo these two 13 millimeter nuts. And then I'm gonna undo most of the bottom one, but I'm gonna keep it in there and I'll show you why in just a moment. That's gonna be good for now. Let's head over to the front. We have a 13 millimeter bolt up here, right in front of the AC condenser line. And we have one more underneath by our tub here. It's the only one there, you can't miss it. All right, so two reasons why we kept that nut. One, so this whole thing doesn't come crashing down on us. Two, so that it can hang just enough for us to get to our electrical connector here for our fan. This one has a impossible to see clip from this angle right up here. There is one more thing I forgot to mention. The headlight module, uh, ballast module on the passenger side is bolted to the fan frame. So you have one more E10 to get off. Now we can take off our last 13 millimeter nut. And now with that off, we can go ahead and start gently pulling our whole assembly out. Follow me over to the workbench and let's swap this fan assembly onto our new CSF unit. At this point, our job is gonna be to remove the fan and the housing around it off of our old radiator. To start, we have an E10 bolt right up top here that holds this old unit in place. Hang on to that bolt, we're gonna need it again. We have two eight millimeter bolts that hold the actual fan in place, take those off. These you don't have to worry about, the CSF units come with new ones. At the bottom, you're gonna see two metal clips that hold the rubber bushing ends of our radiator in place with the whole assembly. We're gonna work on getting those off next. With that, we should be able to push the radiator off the frame, pull this up, and there's our frame. Then from there, our fan itself is just gonna lift up and slide away from where the hoses were. Now we're just gonna do a couple things. We're gonna set up our new CSF unit where our old one was. We're gonna take our old radiator and put it next to us just so we can compare, make sure A, we have the right radiator for the right side, B, we're swapping over the parts that we need to swap over, and C, we're gonna match up our new radiator hoses to the same uh, layout that the old ones were. So, let's do that. All right, first thing is first, we're gonna go ahead and install our new bung that comes with our stuff on the end of that CSF unit. You could reuse the one on your old radiator, however, the O-ring's gonna be flattened out a little bit it might be a little too worn, it's not gonna seal properly, so spend a couple bucks, swap it out. What I'm doing here is I'm just using a pick tool to push the C-clip out a bit. Sometimes it's easier just to take the whole thing off. Before I install this, I'm gonna take a little bit of antifreeze and just line the O-ring with it. It'll help A, seal it, and B, go in a little bit easier. Next, you will see we have an empty slot here. On our old unit, we have a rubber bracket slash bushing that we're gonna install after we remove it off of our old radiator. To get this out, simply pull it up, wiggle it. You can go ahead and press on that rubber tab right there. And we're simply gonna take it and press it into its new home. Good enough, that'll be adjustable once we go to put it back on the car. Second on the list, we have our old radiator hoses and we have our new ones. We're gonna match up how they go. They're two different sizes. They only go one way. That looks to be the bottom one, or top one for me, bottom one for you. And then we have the thicker hose, which goes up top. Now, what's cool about these hoses, you may not be able to see this up close, is they typically have a little notch cut out on them. On the plastic units, you're gonna see plastic fins where the old hoses would match up with. So basically, you're gonna use this, while the new ones don't have that, you can kinda of use it as your north star, if you will. So if this hypothetically had those plastic fins, they would be located right here and right here. So I'm gonna make sure this notch, when it's on, points in that direction. It just helps you kinda of get these orientated properly. So again, before I put anything on, I'm gonna match them up. I'm gonna leave that loose for now. 
Same thing with our other hose, just one more time, make sure we have it lined up correctly. And then this is a piece I was talking about that you, again, it's not required to replace. However, we suggest it at the bottom of the kit listing. So do yourself a favor, avoid having to undo so many old parts, just replace it. They are also two completely different sizes, just like the diameters on the hoses are two completely different sizes. It's only gonna go in one way. So I'm gonna lubricate this a little bit. And let's get that installed. All right, with everything situated properly, looking exactly like our old setup, we're gonna go ahead and set these clamps up. They come pre-undone, if that makes sense. They come pre-hooked, they come pre-opened. You call it what you will. However, I highly recommend using the proper tool for these clamps. We are using Astro Tool. This is 94093. This is gonna help us make sure that these clamps situate themselves properly. It's a little tricky at first, but once you get the hang of the tool, it's really the best thing out there for it. With all our hose clamps on, now our next move is gonna to be to reinstall our fan. So let's get started with that. First, we're gonna remove our two 10 millimeter bolts that come on our new CSF units. That's why I mentioned earlier, we didn't have to hang on to those crusty eight millimeters anymore. Line up your two 10 millimeter bolt holes on the other side, start them by hand. And just go ahead and snug, snug them down. Now from here, we're gonna go ahead and reinstall our metal bracket once more. Line up our two pushing holes. You wanna make sure you have your metal washers back in place as well. And with that, we can go ahead and slip these back on. Next, we have our E10 bolt. That's gonna go back up here. That holds this neck connection, wire hose neck connection in place. Beautiful. And with that, our new CSF unit is fully mated to the fan and bracket assembly. So the next thing we're going to do is start slipping it back into the 997. And the first thing we're going to do is guide our headlight module back into place so that we can button up everything else as we took it off. All right. At this time, we're going to go ahead and install our whole assembly. Before you do that though, it would be a good time to blow out your AC condenser if you haven't done so already and or if you still have one. We're gonna go ahead and gently work this back into place. Now just as insurance, I'm gonna start the bottom one by hand. So now let's go back to our tedious tasks of reconnecting our electrical connector for the fan. Next, let's situate this headlight module. Again, that was an E10. Next, we're gonna start our 10 millimeter nut up top by hand as well. And back up front, we're gonna go ahead and start our 13 millimeters as well. We have all four situated. I'm gonna go ahead and snug them all down with the ratchet. These are all 13 millimeter bolts and nuts. With those four 13 millimeters situated, we're gonna go ahead and reattach our coolant line up top. Again, it's a quick disconnect. It's just gonna push on. You'll feel it click. Give it a couple tugs. Shouldn't be going anywhere. Now with our coolant line, plugged in, we can go ahead and reconnect our two radiator hoses. All right, and with our radiator hoses hooked up, we have one more piece back here that needs to be attached. And that's this arm that has the built-in rubber bushing. Just gonna slide on, you have your E10. With that all situated, now we can head up to the front and attach our AC condenser to our radiator itself. To do that, we're gonna go ahead and remove the 10 millimeter bolt supplied by CSF. Set that to the side. You're gonna take your AC condenser, pull it towards the exterior of the car until your two notches on the interior side line up with the tabs on the CSF unit. Then give it a couple love taps to get it started. Boom. Line up your bolt hole on the other end and feed your 10 millimeter bolt back in. At this point, it's a good time to look over everything. Make sure you didn't miss a hose, make sure you didn't miss an O-ring, a connection, an electrical connector, what have you. Now we can go ahead and reinstall our air duct. You'll see that CSF also provides three 10 millimeter bolts for that. So before we do anything, let's take them off and let's grab our air duct and install it. All right, with a quick and dirty wipe down on our ducting, we can go ahead and slip this back into place. You're gonna note there's a tab on the left-hand side on the top and bottom that's gonna key into these two spots. 
All right, we have our three 10 millimeter bolts. Let's go ahead and get those started. All right, at this point, we can go ahead and reinstall our front bumper. However, we're gonna do the right thing. We're gonna go ahead and bleed the system first, make sure we have no leaks. Once we know that's good to go, then we'll go ahead and button everything else up. So if you wanna just get to the bumper install, skip to the end, but please don't do that. Instead, let's go bleed this thing. All right, with everything buttoned up now, the next thing to do is bleed and fill our coolant system. So to do that, we're gonna do two things. One, we have a 10 millimeter nut that holds this tank in place. The reason I'm gonna undo that is to get the tank out a little bit. For the specific bleeder that we're using, I need all the room I can to work with, so let me do that first. There's different kinds of bleeders out there, vacuum bleeders. This is the one we have in the shop today. While it doesn't have the best room to work in with in here, it does do the job. You wanna hook this up to your airline. Make sure your valve is closed on the tool. And then to make sure you have a good seal on here, what you can do is you can start pressing on the silver button here to start creating a suction. So far it seems to be holding, so what I'm gonna do is, in case we pull up any coolant from the system that may have remained, I'm gonna wrap this towel just around the nozzle here where the air exits, just to keep overspray down to a minimum. You wanna get it as close as possible to 25 on the gauge. We're gonna let it sit for a minute, make sure it doesn't drop. If it starts dropping, that means we have a leak somewhere, but if it holds, and that means our system is tight, then we can show you how to prime the line with coolant and then fill the system up. It's been about a minute or two. Our system's holding. I got it as close to 25 as possible. To the left of me, you'll see I have a big blue bucket. I have two gallons of concentrated genuine Porsche coolant in there, as well as two gallons of distilled water, giving me a perfect 50-50 blend. I'll go ahead and stir it up. What you want to do is you want to make sure this end of the fill tube is always at the very bottom of the bucket. The second you suck air in, the whole thing is obsolete. So, I'm going to go ahead and keep one hand on that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my valve up here, and I'm just going to get let the whole line fill up with coolant and then shut it off as soon as that happens. All right. Now, even though that wasn't a lot, there's still some air that got back in the system with just that little bit of, of uh, space in between the lines. So, for a second or two. We're just going to evacuate it. And now comes the fun part. I'm going to hold the end of my hose in my bucket with one hand, release the valve with the other, and just let the system do its thing until it's completely full. All right, my good people. At this point, the system's pretty much stopped consuming coolant. You see we had to add a little bit more distilled water at the end and a little bit more coolant. It's not going to hurt it. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to disconnect the vacuum bleeder from the airline. And then I should be able to just open up the valve and pull up on this tool. Beautiful. And from there, right now, it is currently at the minimum on the tank. Once we run it a little bit, we'll have this bleeder valve open, as mentioned earlier, just to help burp any little bit of cavities that may be trapped with air in there still. We'll put our cap back on in the meantime, slide our tank all the way back in put our 10 millimeter nut back. With the tank back in place, now we can go ahead and put our front bumper back on and wrap up this radiator upgrade job. With everything situated, we can go ahead and reinstall this brace. Now let's grab our T25 and put our bumper back on. All right, now we can go ahead and reinstall our bumper. You wanna get it just seated in place and then make sure if you have electrical connectors on the side or lines for your headlight washers that those are not being pinched before you push it all the way in. That looks good there. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna install those metal clips one by one, pushing up on the bumper, making sure it's flush against the body with one hand while you key it in with the other. All right, let's start with this one first. That's one. There's two. You see it sucks in the body clips really nice. While we have you up here, let's go ahead and install our three T25s. Let's lower the car down a little bit and install our surrounding trim that we took off earlier. Now we can go ahead and reinstall our surrounding trim. We can close this up just so we know that this top is all situated. Now let's lift up the car a little bit. We'll button up the sides, the underneath, and then the fender liners and 
we're almost there. Now we're gonna go ahead and reconnect our few bits under here before we wrap up our fender liner install. Starting with our fog light. Plug that Johnson back in. I'm gonna throw a zip tie on this before we put the liner in just because someone broke the existing clip. You have your turn signal wiring which is gonna stick out over there. You have your windshield washer fluid line for the headlight washers. That clips in there. Don't forget we have one T25 that lives up here. You can pop in your marker light. Clip it into the electrical connector first. Beautiful. And you want to make sure the front end keys into the bumper first. Nice. Now let's slip our fender liner back on. We have our 10 millimeter plastic nut that lives up here in the abyss. And we have a handful of T25s that are going to go back in their respective homes. All we have left to do is install our wheel, replicate the same thing on the other side, and then I'll catch you underneath when we do our belly pan. Now we're going to go ahead and reinstall our belly pan. We have our four plastic 10 millimeter nuts that we took off in the back earlier. And then we have a whole bunch of T25s, including the ones underneath the front bumper that we took off earlier. And there you have it, my good people, another DIY in the books. Overall, a pretty cool one as we got to cover a couple different topics today. So again, bumper removal, radiator cleaning, radiator replacement slash upgrade. Overall, a cool DIY. If you like this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments on what we did today, leave them in the comment box below. And if you like this DIY and you want to see more like them, consider subscribing. We make new ones all the time. As always, thank you for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.